Hello, I'm Laura Lewis. Welcome to the class on dwarf planets, comets and asteroids. So all the other bodies of the solar system, which are not planets, really, or the sun. OK, so you need to know where these things are, first of all. So asteroids and dwarf planets we'll start with. We'll look at comets a bit later. So the main asteroid belt, here with asteroid, is generally between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So in the main asteroid belt, OK? The Kuiper belt goes from the orbit of Neptune outwards. And you can see Pluto orbits within that. OK, so that's where the two main belts of asteroids are. OK. So Pluto and the dwarf planets. So lots of people talk about the way that Pluto was reclassified. So Pluto used to be known as a planet, OK, until we just started discovering other objects in the Kuiper belt. OK, so one of these was Eris, which is shown here in its orbit, got quite an eccentric orbit. So it means it's quite sort of um, not near circular, it's eccentric. Um, and we've decided we found lots of things like Eris, uh, Sedna, there's other ones as well in the, uh, the Kuiper Belt. It's full of objects, some are bigger than Pluto. So we had to make a decision whether you had to say they're all planets or they're all dwarf planets. And so what happened was that to make something a planet, it had to be big enough to put itself into a sphere, so like a round shape, also to not share its orbit with lots and lots of other bodies like that, OK? Um, because they're all very similar size, OK? So yeah, there's lots of other objects that are out there as well. So but Pluto actually has a moon called Charon, OK? So some of these are yeah, big enough to have moons and things, though so if Pluto orbited on its own somewhere else and it would be a planet so even if our moon orbited on its own it actually would be a planet as well because it's big enough to put itself into a sphere okay but it's because it's been it's within that Kuiper belt that it's um now we classified okay asteroids so asteroids so they're usually irregular so it means that they're not round some are close to being round okay we will carry close to being round in the asteroid belt they're mostly made of rock. They're mostly rocky, OK? But some have some metals in them. So some are a bit metallic, OK? So when you get pieces of meteorites, sometimes um, you buy them or find them, sometimes they're actually a little bit metallic. As well. They're quite interesting to look at. So really, they're left over of when the, of when the solar system formed, OK? And there's some special asteroids called the Trojan asteroids that share an orbit with Jupiter. OK, so they're much, much smaller than Jupiter. That's why Jupiter can still keep its status as a planet. Um, but they are attracted to Jupiter because it's such a, a big planet. So that's good for us because that means that um, larger asteroids that may collide with the Earth are generally um, attracted to Jupiter first and they're sort of kind of swept up by Jupiter. It's like a big hoover of the solar system. So actually Jupiter saves us from a lot of asteroids making their way into the inner solar system hitting Earth. Um, the, the dinosaurs, but <laughs> didn't quite, didn't quite, um, were quite lucky. But it's extremely rare for an asteroid to come near the Earth, okay, because of Jupiter. Okay, comets. I think these are the mysterious and beautiful um, objects in the solar system. If you've ever seen a comet in the sky, you'll know straight away. You see it; straight, it looks very different. Okay, I saw one in 1997 um, called Hale Bop. Okay, so they are mainly made of rock and ice. OK, so they're icy. They're a bit different to asteroids because they've got ice in them. So their tails are made of gas. So this was the, sort of the, the, the pretty bit that's melted. OK, gas. So it's like the ice is melted in the centre of gas. And that's always pointing away from the sun because the sun's melting it off. OK, that um, it's always. And so yeah, it's the ice that makes the tail like that. And it's the sun. So when they're away from the sun, they don't have a tail like that. So when they come near the sun, that we actually can see them. OK, the most famous comet, Halley's Comet, uh, it's called by Edmund Halley, orbits the sun every 75 years. So most comets have quite long orbits. Some have orbits of thousands of years. Some comets, like, you'll never see again in our lifetime because the, the orbits are so eccentric. OK, so and they're not, they're not also in the same plane as the other planets as well. OK, so definitely so some comets are destroyed by the, some of the planets when they come in the solar system. OK, so um, comets come from a swarm of bodies. I say a swarm, it's like a, it's a three dimensional thing. 
of his surrounding the solar system known as the Oort cloud, named after its discoverer. Okay, so comets, yeah, if you see, if you're lucky enough to see one in the sky, okay, they're very spectacular things to see. Okay, so thank you for listening to the introduction to the, um, the asteroids and the dwarf planets and the comets of our solar system. Hope to see you in the other videos of the solar system and other science videos. Thank you.